Let's welcome in our basketball analyst, Monica McNutt, who is shaking her head just like I am. Steph Curry, Monica, he's making all of these contested shots. Other teams are well aware that he's trying to score. So why is he still so effective? Ryan, it is crazy. I mean, he's given a new definition to being in the zone. I personally crushed an entire bag of popcorn last night watching him <laughs> because he's that much fun. But to answer your question on why he's so effective, he doesn't need much space or much time to get his shots off. And so defenses are essentially rendered helpless. Let's check out a couple of plays from last night. First of all, he's got great handle. Draymond Green sets tremendous screens. And then here, Matisse Thybul, as good a defender as he is, he flies by. Steph is so patient, he knocks down the three. And then again, his brother. I felt so bad for him at this moment, know. Ryan. The group texts <laughs> were popping. We were like, man, Steph got to be sick. He was right there, and it's still cash. And then this time, off the screen, again, poor Tyrese Maxey, the, the rookie, is put in the mix. But the part about that shot, Ryan, is Steph hit the shot, and he was already like, all right, let's go back. That is not a textbook follow-through, young people. Only Steph Curry can do that. <laughs> Well, Curry's got 96 points in his last two games. That's the most over a two-game span by a player 33 or older since MJ in 2001. Okay, Monica, keep enjoying your popcorn. I want you to stay right there. We're going to come back to you, okay? Yeah, because we have an interesting one tonight in the association with a lot on the line for Zion Williamson and the struggling Pelicans as they take on Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets. Because of the Pelicans' struggles, they've got to make some moves, got to win if they want to get in the postseason. They're three and a half games out of the 10th spot in the West right now, three and a half games. Remember, this season, teams in the 7 to 10 spots go to a play-in tournament for the last two spots in the playoffs. New on SportsCenter, Lonzo Ball discussing the Pelicans' playoff push. We got a game every other day, and uh, we got to, you know, close out these games, these last 15, 16 that we think that we got, try to make a, you know, run at the playoffs. So, you know, we've been pretty much losing games, you know, close games for the majority of the year. So these last 15, we really got to lock in as a whole. And we know that we went over that today in film. Like, you know, there's no no more time to look at film and try to correct things. Like, it's, it's now to fix everything, and it starts tonight. So they enter the game tonight against the Nets with a 4-7 and seven record this month. Three of those losses coming in overtime. They've lost three straight. One reason they're struggling is because they've not done well shooting the ball from long range. And NBA worst 29% from three this month. Specifically, they've been held under 30% on threes in each of the last three games. And again, they've lost all three of them. So there's a trend here. There's a pattern for sure. Here's Pelicans reporter Andrew Lopez with the latest. They just got to make shots. I mean, that's probably that's part of the issue right now. Lonzo Ball has missed some time. Nikhil Alexander Walker is out. Josh Hart's out. They just haven't hit from the perimeter, and especially off of Zion's passes. In March, they shot over 48% off of Zion's passes. In the last six games, that's down to 41.8%. So uh, Zion, as, as point Zion, has, has really taken over, but they're just not hitting those passes. Now, maybe things will change tonight. Zion is going to debut the Jordan Zion 1, his first signature shoe. So maybe that'll give them the extra little kick that they need uh, when they play the Nets. All right, let's bring Monica McNutt back in with us on SportsCenter. All right, you tell me. We just heard what Andrew said. And that's pretty basic, right? you got to make these shots. What do you say has to happen going forward for Zion and the Pelicans to win games down the stretch if they want to make the postseason? Well, Sage, I certainly echo that system, uh, sentiment, excuse me, but you heard Lonzo say it. They've got to make the right decisions in close ball games, in particular over the weekend versus the Knicks. The decision to contest Derrick Rose, who would have only scored two and give up a three, stands out. And we know that Coach Van Gundy had plenty to say about that one. But when it comes to the two players that have to be going and continue going, it's Zion and it's Brandon Ingram for this group. Making shots, as simple as it sounds, that is the essence of the game. We know that Zion can get downhill. We know that he can get to the free throw line. When he penetrates or kicks, those guys have to hit shots. And Brandon Ingram, who tonight, fittingly, they're going to play the Nets, and I know KD isn't there, but he's been compared to KD in terms of his skill set, his ability, his length. These guys just have to hit shots at a high clip. They've got to continue to be aggressive. They've got 15 games left. Seven versus top or 500 or better teams and 11 versus teams in the West. So they can't just talk about it, Sage. They got to 100% be about it. Yeah, absolutely. And timing is everything. And the timing of this little fall off recently is just the worst possible timing. So we'll see what happens beginning tonight against the Nets. Speaking of the Nets, they're shorthanded too. You mentioned Kevin Durant. Here's the very latest on KD. He will again not play with that left thigh bruise. That's the reason. He returned last week after missing 23 games. In the second game back, he could only stay in for four minutes. Steve Nash said afterwards that he's just sore, which does happen with bruising.
specifically big bruises on the thigh. Here's Malika Andrews with the very latest. I asked Steve Nash recently how concerned he is now a couple of weeks ago when they were dealing with injuries because they are getting down to the wire and what this team has said all year is that as long as they're healthy when it counts, then it's all worth it. But now we're getting pretty close to where it counts. So with Kevin Durant, this is a team right now, they're operating out of a lot of caution because just like with you or me, when you get a bruise, it tends to be worse the next day. So the team wants to see how he is responding to treatment. They're being very cautious with him here, just like they have been all season because what is most important to them is that he healthy come playoff time. Remember, this is also a back-to-back -back for the Nets today and tomorrow. So they're being very cautious there, but he remains on the road trip with the team. Now, with James Harden, he is also traveling with the team currently because where he stands is they are trying to get him more reps, right? They want to get him four on four, five on five. That's what's missing for him at this point. So there have been no setbacks, I've been told, as he continues to progress through his rehab. But what they want now is to make sure he gets those reps underneath his belt and after that happens, they're hopeful he can play in a game perhaps in the next couple of days or even a week or so. Let's bring Monica back in. Here's the thing. There's always a silver lining with situations like this, long-term injuries, because other players get more playing time. Guys who need it maybe wouldn't see as much otherwise. So who specifically, Monica, do you see benefiting from the stars being out right now? It's all of the guys that are not the headliner stage. And when we think back over the course of the regular season, when this team's ability to defend was in big question, right? It was actually that second unit that kind of put some stamp on the defense. You think of Jeff Green, he has an NBA title. You think of Landry Shamit, he's played big time minutes with the Clippers team that made a deep playoff run. Nick Claxton has come along. Bruce Brown has been tremendous. Ju Joe Harris has been knocking down shots and also playing defense. So I think that this group could buy them a little bit of grace in the playoffs, but as it stands now, they will face up against a Miami team who is just flat out gritty. I will say, Sage, though, that as we get closer, my other concern, I understand the logic in being very patient with KD, but playoffs are a string of games. Will he be able to go multiple games um, without being able to take rest? So we'll be watching that for sure.